When choosing a weightlifting belt, the lever belts are one of the most popular options, especially for powerlifters. The problem is most aren't adjustable. This is why today we're gonna to do a comparison review between the two best adjustable options, the Pioneer PAL lever belt, the latest and greatest, and the Stalwart, the best around, the SBD belt. Let's do it. Hey guys, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews, and today we're doing a comparison on two of what I believe to be the best adjustable lever belts that are out there. First, let me tell you a little bit about lever belts. Lever belts are designed specifically for powerlifting. They're very nice because you can snap and unsnap. Also, when, after you do a big lift, you can walk out of the rack and just throw it off, throw it everywhere, look really cool, everything like that. But the real benefit to them is the fact that you dial in the exact place you want to be every time, it snaps really well, you feel locked in, and it's easier to adjust than a roller buckle belt. The issue is they're very hard to adjust if you fluctuate in weight. So like me, I go from anywhere from 350 to 450, depending on what I eat. So because of that weight adjustment, I'm trying to adjust my belts between the different sizes. Because I'm trying to adjust, adjust my belt between the different sizes, roller buckle is nice. However, I like that locked in feel of the lever. That's why companies like Pioneer and SBD have come out with adjustable levers. Up until this point, your really only option was this bad boy right here, the SBD belt. So today, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tell you which one, in my opinion, based on the Coupe knurled scoring system, is the best. Let's find out. So the first category I wanna cover is the price. There is a clear winner in this one. If you know anything about these belts, you're probably aware. The Pioneer PAL belt is the newest model. This one, in some ways, does copy the SBD belt because this is a patent design. They're the only one that had it. They're the first to have it. This is now a patent pinning design. It's not the exact same. There's some benefits and negatives to the different designs, but the biggest difference between them in price is that this one, the SBD belt, is 227 and 50 cents. That's a lot of money, 227 bucks and 50 cents. That's a lot for any belt. I don't know of any belt that costs more than that. The PAL belt, although I'm not really seeing it on their site where you can buy the PAL lever plus the actual belt, but a comparable model, this is about 60 bucks. You can get one of their stock belts for about 100 bucks or so. So you're looking about 150, 160 bucks for a Pioneer belt versus an SBD belt. Clear winner here, Neuromark goes to Pioneer for a lower price. The second category is the overall build quality. I'm just talking about everything about the belts, not just the lever system, but also the belts. I'll get a lever system in a moment. So the overall belts, both belts are extremely good, okay? Pioneer is known for making theirs in the USA. Pioneer is using what's called sole bend leather, and it really is some of the best quality leather that's out there. Sole leather is cut from the best portion of the steer hide, sink below the shoulder and along the back ends inside of the steer spine. It's firm, thick, strong. Everything about it is very high quality. They're making these in Texas. You know, the owner of the company is very outlandish and like talking about, he believes these are the best belts that are available. He knows leather really well. He compares them to all the others. And I believe their belts are some of the best constructed belts that are out there. Now that's not to downplay an SBD belt. SBD is based in the UK. They're making these in the UK. They're using very high quality leather. It's a 13 millimeter. It's extremely thick. You can get Pioneer in 13 millimeter, but SBD is really known for offering one option, and that is the SBD belt. That's all they call it. There's no special name. It's just the SBD belt. You get one option, big, bad, and thick. Like I like my women, just kidding. Sorry, baby. But the SBD belt is 13 millimeters. It's using very high quality leather. They don't talk as much about the leather that they're actually using. However, I do know I've seen some breakdowns on them where people cut them open. I just don't want to do that because I like it too much. Um, that they are very thick and it's one reason they take so long to break in. I hated this thing when I first got it. Breaking it in absolutely sucked. Once it was broken, it was nice. This one, Breaking time was much easier. So for a neural mark, as far as quality, I'm gonna give it to both. They're both very high quality overall construction, using great leather. Honestly, between the two, it's probably on preference. They're both very high quality. Third part is customization. 
Okay, this is something a lot of people like. This is one piece of gym equipment you can have that you can actually customize. There isn't a lot of gym equipment out there you can customize. People aren't really customizing lifting shoes often. You know, if you're going to the gym and doing powerlifting, you may have like a singlet that you've had customized or something. There's some barbells that are using Cerakote, but they're kind of like basic customizations. A lifting belt is something people really like to customize. They'll put stupid stuff written on the inside. I know I've got another Pioneer over here that's got Pioneer on the inside and then the GGR logo over here. I think that's pretty cool. I got another one that just says Coop so I don't forget my name when I'm using my belt. You know, I've got some cool ones that have cool names, but I've seen some that are absolutely amazing. And Pioneer, from my standpoint, does the best customization and SPD, as far as I know, doesn't even offer customization. So clear winner, extra neural mark, goes to Pioneer for the customization. Fourth is the break-in period. If you're buying a belt and you're using it within a short time frame and you're wanting to use it for a meet or something like that, honestly, I probably wouldn't suggest buying either of these. You should like do it ahead of time, but if you really have to, the Pioneer belt is gonna have an easier break-in time. The SPD, as I've see, said previously, just takes a long time to break in. That said, despite it taking a long time to break in, once it's broken in, you never have to do it again. It feels great. It breaks into your body to the different curvature of your you know, trunk. It just feels really good once you're using it. However, it took about six months of just squatting a whole lot to break that bad boy in. And I hated every minute of it. This one, it took a couple weeks and then it was pretty good. Both of them I tried to beat and mash and you know I rolled them up. I, it's kind of like you do a baseball glove. I did something similar. This one, it just, it's just so thick. It just takes forever. So Neuromark to Pioneer. Fifth one, overall durability. Which one do I think is more durable? This one's a little bit difficult because I haven't had this Pioneer for as long as I've had the SBD. However, I have had this SBD and I've had another SBD that we use as the gym belt where everybody and their mother uses it at the gym. And I gotta say, it looks the exact same as it did on day one. The lever functions the same, the belt feels the same, it doesn't have any loose threads. They're using double stitched, whereas Pioneer's is using single stitch. Honestly, I would say that they're probably pretty similar in durability, but just based on you know how much I've used them and how much I've put into them and my other Pioneer, I would say that overall, if I was gonna pick one strictly for durability, especially because this lever is proven, has been used by squatters you know, that squat 10 times what I do, I would say the SBD is, for this purpose, more durable. So I'm gonna give a Neuromark there, although I could say they're probably pretty similar in that regard. Next category, and probably the most important when you're looking at these belts, is the lever system. Here's the thing, the lever system on the SBD was revolutionary. There's no doubt about it. It's the reason so many spent $227 on it, even though, like, who would spend that much on a freaking belt that's not customized? It's a lot, okay? But it was so good, it was so nice to use. If you ever use a lever belt, we gotta get a screwdriver out and screw it. I mean, it just sucks. So an adjustable lever was such a good idea. And not only was it a good idea, they went to the high of the market and they tried to make it as good as possible. So their lever is fantastic. Here, let me show you how it works. So while you put it on, just like any other belt, throw it on. The difference is, rather than you having like this fixed position on the lever, you can do it in different positions. So other belts, you gotta take a screwdriver out, everything like that. This one, you can place it in the hole that you'd like. So basically what I like to do is, I've kind of got one I always use, which is right around here, maybe one less, depending on the set. Then I can dial it in for a heavy set. If I'm doing something that's like max effort, I like to do something a little bit tighter, but I still like to use this on some of my warm up sets. So one of the benefits of an adjustable belt is I can undo it a little bit, go a little bit lighter while still wearing it without having to undo the full lever system and then I'm there. So it's like, it's somewhat tight or I can go a little bit looser depending on, on the warm up set. So it's just kind of sitting there and I can feel it. I have something to push up against. And then when I'm ready to go, baby, then I put it in something that's a little bit tighter. So as you can see, the maneuverability is super easy. Clamping it in, once it's clamped, it's locked in, I'm ready to go. When I'm done with my set, I can undo it and take it off. Super simple, works really well, I'm a fan. Now that you've seen how the SBD works, the Pioneer works very similarly, okay? It's a little bit different system. It doesn't have quite as many adjustment options that are as quick. However, 
for most people's purposes, it works just as well. It's still using like this nice cast design that's gonna last a long time. I haven't had any issues. It's easy to take on, take off. It just works. The other thing that's good about it is you don't have to use it with a Pioneer belt. If you wanna use it with a different belt, you can throw it on a different belt if you'd like to. But here's how it works. Very similar mechanism. I place it on my body just like I would any other belt. Ba -doo -ba -doo. I place this on here. The difference is the amount of adjustability between this one and the SBD is not as much. And that's one reason that the SBD is the lever system maybe a little bit nicer when you're not factoring in price. So I place this in here, I'm here ready to go. The only other increments I've got is I've got a few others that are basically like, you know, a half inch or so or an inch off and then I can tighten them in. So there is a change there. However, the amount of adjustments that are available is not as much. But I think for most people, most people aren't, I think, adjusting from like a super wide range. They've got one that they use for like warm up sets, and then they've got one that you use for like a really heavy working set. And so that's how it works. But once you're in, just like the SBD belt, you're absolutely locked in, ready to go. Just like the other one, when you're done, clamp that sucker out, take it off, throw it off, just like you would with say a roller buckle belt, really easy to use. And you're ready to do whatever superset or rest or whatever you'd like to do. That's the benefit of the lever system. So which lever would I get? Which one do I think is better? Well, this one's kind of difficult. One, because I'm factoring in price, and I've already talked about price, so I'm gonna throw price out of here, and if I was just saying which one would I want if I could only have one, honestly, they're so similar, I'd give them both neural marks. I know it's kind of hard. I think I, I like the SBD slightly more. However, most people shouldn't buy this because it's not that much better for the price than the Pioneer. So I think I'd give them both neural marks. I think they're both like really good. Some have benefits that others don't, um, as I've discussed, but I think overall, they're both a really good design that do it a little bit differently, but serves the same purpose. All right, so overall, this is what we've got. We've got three neural marks for the SBD belt. It's a fantastic belt. It's one of the best, if not the best. We've got four neural marks for the Pioneer. The reason that I would pick the Pioneer over the SBD is mainly on the value proposition. It's pretty much just as good as the SBD in every category with a much lower price. That's kind of how it is. I mean, if you want the best of the best, don't care about the cost, don't care about customization, then the SBD is great. However, I think for most people, I would definitely suggest the Pioneer PAL. It's a great belt. They're both great, can't go wrong with either. But if I was gonna buy one and I was looking at the cost, and after using both of them, I don't feel that much different during use. So I'd go with the P Pioneer PAL, genius design. But you're not gonna go wrong either way. All right, this is Coop from Garage Room Reviews. What do you think about the format of the video with the neural marks and the comparison? I kinda wanna start going more into detail on some of these reviews when we do comparisons. Let me know in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Peace.